This is our world. A warm, comfortable, familiar place. But walk away from the fire and look up. Our thoughts soon leave home. Are we just insignificant specks? Is the universe welcoming or hostile? We could stand here forever, wondering. Or we could turn our back on this beach, leave home, to see the universe from here to its edge, to discover its wonders, confront its horrors. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> the edge of space, only a hundred kilometers up, just an hour's drive from home. Down there, life continues. The traffic keeps moving, stocks go on trading, and Star Trek is still showing. But we have to leave all this behind. To dip our toe into the vast dark ocean beyond. Into the shallows. Not too far from home. Onto the moon. Dozens of astronauts have come this way before us. Twelve of them have walked on the moon itself. Just over 400,000 kilometers from home. Three days in a spacecraft. So close, it's as if we've barely left home. Familiar, safe, within sight of Earth. Looks like a deserted battlefield, bombarded by millions of meteoroids and asteroids. But it's quieter now. It's obvious there have been no major collisions for millions of years. This brings back memories. The Apollo 11 lunar module. Neil Armstrong's first footprints. Looks like they were made yesterday. There's no air to change them. They should survive for millions of years. Maybe longer than us. Our time is limited. We need to take our own giant leap. Further than any human has ever traveled. Out of the darkness, a friendly face. The goddess of love. Venus. The morning star. The evening star. Sometimes she welcomes the new day in the east. Others, 
she says goodnight in the west. The planet's spectacular yellow clouds reflect the sunlight. That's why this is the solar system's brightest planet. A sister to our planet. She's about the same size and gravity as Earth. We should be safe here. But the Venus Express space probe is telling us these dazzling clouds are made of deadly sulfuric acid. That the planet's atmosphere is choked with carbon dioxide. It's ringing alarm bells. Venus is one angry goddess. The air is noxious, the pressure unbearable, and it's hot, approaching 500 degrees Celsius. Stay too long and we'd be corroded, suffocated, crushed and baked. It's a Soviet Venera robotic probe. Its heavy armor has been wrecked by the extreme atmosphere. So lovely from Earth, up close, this goddess is hideous. in its atmosphere is trapping the sun's heat. This is global warming gone wild. Before it took hold, maybe Venus was calm, more like her sister planet Earth. If that's true, this could be our planet's future. Beginning to think we shouldn't be out here, that we should turn back. But there's something hypnotic about the sun. Like Medusa, too terrible to look at, too powerful to resist, luring us onwards. On, like a moth to a flame. Dwarfed by, scorched by the sun, it's Mercury. Get too close to the sun, this is what happens. Temperatures swing wildly here. At night, it's minus 170 degrees. Come midday, it's 400 plus. Burnt, frozen, and look at those scars. A sign that Mercury had a violent past. The messenger space probe. It's telling us something strange. For its size, this little planet has a powerful gravitational pull. It must be heavier than it looks. It's like a huge ball of iron, covered with a thin veneer of rock, the core of what was once a much larger planet. Maybe a stray planet slammed into Mercury, blasting away its outer layers in a deadly game of cosmic pinball. Whole planets on the loose, destroying anything in their path, even entire planets. And we're in the middle of it. Vulnerable, exposed, small. Everything is telling us to turn back. But who could defy this? The sun, in all its mesmerizing splendor. Our light, our lives. Everything we do is controlled by the sun, depends on it. And more than that, it's the Greek god Helios driving his chariot across the sky. The Egyptian god Ra, reborn every day. The summer solstice sun rising at Stonehenge. For millions of years, this was as close as it got to staring into the face of God. 150 million kilometers from home, 
a 20-year journey by plane. Switch it off, and it's so far away, we wouldn't know about it for a whole eight minutes. It's so big, you could fit a million Earths inside it. So heavy, its gravity controls the entire solar system. But who needs numbers? We've got the real thing. We see it every day. A familiar face in our sky. Up close, it's unrecognizable. A turbulent sea of incandescent gas. The thermometer rises to over 5,000 degrees. Down in the core, it's got to be tens of millions of degrees. Hot enough to trigger a nuclear reaction, turning millions of tons of matter into energy every second. More than all the energy ever made by mankind. Back home, we see this energy as light. Feel it as heat. But up close, there's nothing comforting about the sun. It's so full of electrical and magnetic activity, it's bursting out in these huge incandescent gas loops called prominences. Each one releasing more energy than 10 million volcanoes. You could get the Earth through one of these loops and still have tens of thousands of kilometers to spare. And where they burst through, it's exposing the cooler layers below, making sunspots. They're a fraction cooler than their surroundings. That's why they look black, but they're still hotter than anything on Earth. And they're massive, too. Some of these are at least 50,000 kilometers across. A solar flare. A superheated stream of electrified gas blasting deadly radiation out into space. But one day, all this will stop. The sun's fuel will be spent. When it dies, that'll be it for the Earth as well. This god creates life and destroys it, demands we keep our distance. This comet has strayed too close. It's being boiled away by the sun's heat, creating a tail that stretches for millions of kilometers. No doubt where this comet's come from. The icy wastes of deep space. But look at all this steam. The geysers and dust. It's the sun again, melting the comet's frozen heart. A kind of vast, dirty snowball, covered in grimy tar. 